Beloveds, let's stand for our first song, one of my favorites, Stayed on Spirit. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. 
on your feet, let's offer the namaste greeting to one another. Namaste, namaste, namaste Zoomers, namaste, we love you. Namaste Travis and Brian, thank, thank you, and Joy, woohoo, namaste. Namaste musicians, thank you everyone, blessings, namaste, namaste. All right, and please take a moment also to silence your cell phones. Silence your cell phones. Go right ahead and do that. <laughs> if you get a call during the service, I'm going to call you up here. <laughs> and I'm going to answer your phone. <laughs> Good morning, beloveds. My name is Reverend Elizabeth Raleigh Hogue, and I am the spiritual director and senior minister here. And it is my joy to say welcome to the Awakening Ways spiritual community where all that we ask is that you remain open to the possibility of awakening to the loving heart, the inspired mind, and sacred soul present in every life. We are an independent New Thought community and we follow the teachings of Ernest Holmes. This service has been designed especially for you. Welcome home. We have been waiting for you. Yeah. So we have an affirmation for today, and I invite you to please repeat after me. I recognize that practice makes permanent. I recognize that practice makes permanent. I walk my talk. I, walk my talk. I, take, action. I take action. And it is good. And, it is good. and so it is. So All right, and now our practitioner for the day. Uh, Jan will come up and offer a science mind, Ernest Holmes reading, and our prayer. Are we good? Yeah, good. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> so a reminder from the soul support team that we are here for you during the week for prayers, for any situation that you would like for us to pray on. There are four ways that you can receive prayers. First of all, you can fill out a prayer request form and put it in the box over there on the table. You can meet me at the back of the room at the end of the service, and we'll do a quick uh, prayer for you. You can send us an email during the week if something comes up at info at awakeningways.org. And there is a fourth one, and I have no idea what it is. 
Oh, make an appointment. That's it. That's it. Make an appointment with one of the practitioners or ministers. We would be happy to meet with you. I don't know why that happens, but anyhow. All right, so the reading this morning is from This Thing Called You, wonderful, wonderful book. And Ernest Holmes says, there is a pattern of perfection at the center of your being which has never been touched by disease or misfortune. Your intellect senses this through intuition. Your imagination feels it through divine right. Your inward consciousness knows it through faith. What we are trying to do is to awaken our entire being to spiritual awareness. So now if you want to take a deep breath in and out, get comfortable in your chair, close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. As we acknowledge right now this divine presence, this divine presence and power that has created this most beautiful morning for us, this presence that is here, this presence that is within each and every one of us, this presence that goes with us everywhere we go, it speaks through us, it thinks through us, it breathes through us. So we give thanks for this amazing morning that is about to unfold. We are always so appreciative of, of our musicians and their talent and how they share that talent and love with us every single week. And we know that Reverend Elizabeth's words will touch our heart and there will be something there in her wisdom this morning that we absolutely need to hear. So we give thanks as this morning unfolds easily, effortlessly, and in divine right action. I release these words unto the law, and together we say, and, and so, so it is. is. Hello, welcome to KGOD, everyone's favorite station, broadcasting today's highest consciousness to you live from eternity, commercial free with everyone's favorite DJ, God. Yay, God. 
<laughs> Thank you. The thing itself that knows what you love and leads you to it. A special shout out to our sponsors, love, peace, joy, harmony, compassion, wisdom, and bliss. When traveling, please be sure to check out our sister stations, KTRU, KIM, KLUV, and KONE. <laughs> Today's broadcast is brought to you by the angels and the cosmic merrymaids of the universe. Now, don't turn that dial. Your celestial song is coming up next. Warning, listening to this station for prolonged periods may lead to ecstatic joy, profound prosperity, sparkling light, overwhelming clarity, and the peace that passes human understanding. <laughs> Listen at your own bliss. And so it is. <laughs> well, good morning, beloveds. All right, so, um, so KGOD. I wanted to share a little bit with you about that. <laughs> Where did that come from? It was a total God download, right? Um, I love KGOD, and I love tuning into KGOD. Now, when I first got into New Thought and Science of Mind teaching, what happened for me was I kept hearing that uh, there were uh, things that were said to me from my past that have created my experience for today, and I wondered what that was. And I thought, I'm going to have to turn everything off, like stop listening to the news and stop listening to all these other stories that are going on all around me and really tune into spirit, really tune into KGOD. And, I, and so I did that, and I stopped watching TV. I know many of you have done this too, right? And you may still be not watching TV, but we get to choose what we want to watch. What? <laughs> and so, and so KGOD began in my life, right? And, uh, and it's been magnificent. And so uh, there was a talk one time that I did on your spiritual broadcasting. You are a spiritual broadcasting station, right? Like we're tuning into KGOD and we're also emitting Whatever we're listening to, we have this atmosphere, and I imagine it like Pigpen. Remember Pigpen, the cartoon? And he's got this cloud of dirt. Well, we have this cloud of stuff, right? It's not dirt necessarily. Maybe some of it is. But it's a cloud nonetheless, and it's this cloud that we carry with us wherever we go. And I, and I tested this out because I have found that if I spend a lot of time in prayer and meditation, and then when I meet people, people can actually feel that. They can actually feel it, and I can see how they are also responding to that by being grounded and anchored in truth. And, uh, and for those really sensitive, they're just like, whoa, what's going on with you? You're vibing, girl. <laughs> I love that, and so that is the energy that I want to bring into the world. That is uh, the way I want to be in all of my interactions, and so my calling is to tune into KGOD. And, uh, and so for January of every year, this is what we get. Welcome to KGOD. Don't worry, that's not gonna be the new way every Sunday. <laughs> It's January for us to remember to tune in. Now, as we tune into this station, KGOD, we are uh, letting go of that static. We are the static, right, of fear, the static of doubt, the static of worry, the static of the to-do list or whatever it is, and really tuning back into the divine, tuning into pure love, tuning into what the sponsors are offering us, love, joy, peace, harmony, wisdom, compassion, and bliss, right? And so much more. Whatever we choose, yes, we can tune into whatever we choose by tuning into KGOD. And now for the month of January, we've been tuning into wonder. Wonder, wonder everywhere. <laughs> And so uh, what I love about wonder is it's so massive. It, it's just so huge, you know? And so 
Uh, we've had this book of the month, Ordinary Wonder, uh, by, it's a Zen Life and Practice by Charlotte Joko Beck. And you may have noticed we have a book of the month, but I'm not always referring to it, but I'm reading it throughout the month and getting inspiration and drawing from the book. And so this book is really our book for the whole year. And so I will continue to uh, refer to this book and and share stories and things from this book because she speaks of wonder in our everyday ordinary experiences, including our feelings, our emotions, uh, what is happening for us in our lives on any given day. Regular everyday wonder, yeah? And so that's really what it's been about. And, uh, and so tuning in we tune into KGOD, and I always imagine, do you know when you're traveling and you're listening, does anybody even listen to the radio anymore? Well, you listen, right, some of us, but I remember traveling and listening to a radio station, and it's like, once you reach a certain line where that radio station is no longer available, you know, in the frequency that you're in, some static starts to occur, and it's neither here nor there, and then all of a sudden it's like a Spanish station and you're like, ah, <laughs> it's really loud. And then it's like, whoa. But in that time of, uh, of the in-between where there's a lot of static, right, we can choose where we're going. We can choose our own station. And that is what we're called to do. And so hence tuning in. And now your celestial song, right? Don't turn that dial. Your celestial song is coming up next. Your celestial song is always playing. But if we have static, we can't always hear it. Now, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. So, yes, we're going to experience some static. <laughs> and it's up to us, though, to tune back in, right? Feel the static, experience the static but we don't need to stay in the static. Have you ever just had a station on static consistently? No, you change it immediately. You're not messing around, like, no thank you. <laughs> this is gibberish, yeah? And so that is what we are also called to do. Now our celestial song is who we came here to be, right? Spirit is singing a song in your ear. It is nudging you, it is guiding you forward, all of us, it is, it is the song of us becoming more of who we came here to be constantly. I just got the God bumps because it's just so true. And it is that experience of becoming more of who we came here to be. Now, our celestial song, as I said, is always singing in our ear. So uh, it's up to us to listen and hear that song and take the action which is what the focus is of today's talk, taking action, being in practice, practicing our practice, you know? And then you may have wondered, well, who are the angels and the cosmic Mary maids of the universe? <laughs> well, you know who the angels are, right? Your angels. These are the people that you consider to be your guides, uh, people who have uh, shuffled off the bodysuit and who are now part of the cosmos, but you're still connected to them. Parents, loved ones, pets, right? They all become your guides in some way or another, and we know it's true because we hear their wisdom as we're moving through our lives, and they even come back to comfort us in our sorrow and our missing of them, do they not? Happens for me frequently. And so those are our angels, you know, our guides. And there are angels of the earth, too. Jan, you're an angel of the earth. <laughs> All of you are angels of the earth, you know. And it is, uh, and it is the way that you move through the world. And, and we uh, end up in people's lives and, and our, our friendships and relationships and all of what we experience uh, is a way that we can be an angel in someone else's life, right? And the musicians are angels of the earth. You are an angel of the earth, and you may not realize it, but whenever you're there to be a friend for someone, you're being an angel of the earth. 
Whenever you're being there to comfort someone, you are being an angel of the earth. Acts of service and so much more, you know, you're with me, right? So those are the angels. Now the cosmic merry maids of the universe, these are the beautiful angels also. They're a type of angel and uh, there is or was at some point a company called the merry maids and the merry maids would drive to your home in their van and clean up your house for you and then leave. But you'd pay them and and they had the cute vans, and I just remember that was my first uh, awareness that you could actually pay someone to have them clean your house. Wow, that's pretty cool. Those are real angels, right? <laughs> uh, but the cosmic merry maids are those angels that come in and and clean up the stuff that you're shedding, right? You're releasing things. We're constantly releasing things. Think about our skin. We're constantly releasing dead skin and, and pieces of hair and stuff. <laughs> We're also constantly releasing things like doubt, worry, old behaviors, things that no longer serve us. And they're not necessarily things, but ways of being or uh, mindsets that have brought us up to this place where we are now but aren't serving us where we're going, where we're headed, those things. So we can leave them and imagine with me, you know, you've got this pile of stuff building up in your home of things that you've needed to release, right? Um, uh, not physical things, but the energetic things. So the cosmic merry maids come and clean that up. They take it away so that there's a clearing and that clearing allows us to tune in to an even greater degree to our celestial song. So there's a little bit of the backstory of KGOD. <laughs> it, it's meaningful, you know, so the month of January we've been looking at wonder and the definition, there are definitions of wonder and uh, it is to think or speculate curiously, to be curious about and to be filled with admiration, amazement, or awe. And it's also said to be something strange and surprising, you know, so I think of the wonders of the world, you know, like the pyramids and the Taj Mahal, and what are some of the other wonders of the world? Help me out here. Grand Canyon, Grand Canyon. Niagara, Falls. Niagara Falls, right? Yes those places that we are in awe of. It's like, how did that happen? This is so beautiful and so majestic, and it is clearly God's work. And so we're to take that and use that mindset in our own lives, right? This is God's, this is God's work. Us being here together right now, wow. You, behind your masks, I see you, you know. You, God in form, wow, what a gift, wow. This is God's work, right? <laughs> Amazing. So the first week of January, we actually did our intentions. January, this is the last Sunday in January, finally, right? <laughs> It's been a long January, and so I loved that at the beginning of the year, we wrote our intentions, we wrote letters, remember that? We did that, and then uh, I talked about how uh, the Guru Nanak, who is the founder of the Sikh tradition, said that truth is higher, but higher still is truthful living, and he said it is not enough to know spiritual truth, we must live it. We must experience it and allow ourselves to be transformed by it. And I talked about um, wonder using the five senses. Remember the wonder of taste, that holy and sacred moment of that first sip of coffee in the morning, or the divine splendor of the delicious aroma of coffee beans when you open a new bag and that spark of beauty when you're holding the hand of a loved one or looking into the eyes of your family members, and that sweet sound of your beloved singing or speaking or the sound of your parents' voice or your child's voice or a cat purring or your dog uh, barking gently. <laughs> 
with great love, right? <laughs> Not yapping, <laughs> but that's God too. And then the sight, right? The way we connect with the eternal as we experience the beauty of a baby or art or our family members or whatever, you know? And, uh, and so every week, you'll notice this about me, every week I have a call to action, a call to action at the end of my talk. Now, the call to action is your practice for the week. And so if everything else I say escapes you, <laughs> take note of that call to action because that call to action is the access to what I have been speaking about. And that is your way to practice whatever we have been talking about. So I'm going to review some of the calls to action from this month. So in week one, the call to action was to find wonder in the ordinary things in your life and to ask yourself questions like, in what area of my life could I benefit from a little bit more wonder? Or what is something that I have always wanted to learn to do but haven't done yet? Or what is one ordinary thing that I have a deep appreciation for? And what about it makes it special? When do I feel most alive? So week two, I shared those seven days of wonder. Remember, I experienced wonder in movies, in rest, in corn tortillas that smell right through the bag. <laughs> what? in the bees and swarms of bees and letting the sunshine be the focus and the nature and words and uh, words and floating joy and the wonder of our imagination. And I spoke of how if we wonderfy our gaze, we begin to see that wonder everywhere. And in that second week, there was also talk about how wonder reveals our oneness. Wonder reveals our oneness, our interconnectedness, our interdependence, that everything began as a divine idea and form is an expression of consciousness. Notice the interconnectedness of it all, the creativity, the beauty, the perfection. And I shared that it was evident in the ancient Sanskrit truth, tatvam asi, I am that. And it is the African philosophy, Ubuntu, I am because you are. It is the Mayan precept in Lakesh, which means you are my other me. It is the failure to wonder that creates separation, distrust, and violence. It is failure to wonder that affords abuse of life and our planet. And Guru Nanak was the founder of the Sikh tradition called us to see no stranger, that for everyone we meet and greet throughout our days, we look at them and say to ourselves, sister, brother, sibling, right? And not have them be some other stranger that we don't know because they are a part of us I do not yet know. So this is a high call because it means loving people, loving people even when they don't love you and wondering about people even when they refuse to wonder about you. And so we went on to explore wonder, wonder everywhere. The call to action that week was twofold. The first was to wonderfy your gaze. Look to the world with wonder, wonder about people, to look at others with the mindset that you are a part of me I do not yet know. And the other call to action that week was to consider what inspires you, what takes your breath away. Think about that. What inspires you? What takes your breath away? And then week three, we were very blessed to have practitioner and ministerial student Susan Jones talk about being curious. I listened to her talk. It was awesome, right? Yeah. Wow. Very good. She delivered a wonderful message about being curious. And one of the things that struck me was she shared how 
Google and Facebook can give us the answers that we want, however, they limit our curiosity. So if we just find the answer right away, we aren't thinking about different opportunities or different possibilities. What else is possible? It's kind of like, well, why were the blue flowers this way? And it just gives you the answer. <laughs> and that was so profound, you know. And uh, week four was about asking questions, asking questions, what else is possible? And if you remember, I shared that children ask 70 to 100 questions <laughs> per day, and adults ask 20. The adults usually ask questions like, what do you want for dinner, <laughs> right? Not open-ended questions. And the call to action was to change that because we are change agents. We can change those statistics by asking more open-ended questions and to use sacred inquiry to ask questions of our innermost selves. What is mine to do? What are my next steps? In which direction shall I go? And we ask these questions and allow the answers to live through us. The answers will come to us because that's how it works. So we live our lives as though, yes, I am writing a book, and this is the most important chapter because this is the chapter happening right now, this chapter. And so here we are wrapping it up today, week five, which feels like week 52 of this year. <laughs> <laughs> in the best way, right? So it's all about practice, 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 practice. Now, if you think about it, lawyers practice law, doctors practice medicine, spiritual beings practice spiritualizing our lives. We spiritualize, we're about spiritualizing the intellect. We don't want to get confused and try to intellectualize the spirit. That never works out well. Um, and on Science of Mind, page 51, paragraph 1, Ernest Holmes said, One of the greatest difficulties in the new order of thought is that we are likely to indulge in too much theory and too little practice. So we could be someone that knows all of it. Oh, yes, I've taken that class before. I know all of that. And then when you are in your life and the thing happens and you don't have the tool to apply to it and you're kind of running around, it is that there's too much theory and not enough practice. And so we practice everything, right? The musicians practice so that their uh, sound will be good and so that their voices uh, sound great and there's a whole process of that. It's not like they can just show up and, and sound great. There has also been years and years of developing this, this amazing talent, right? Years. Wow. So uh, athletes, think about athletes and all of their practice, you know, perfecting that craft. Practice, practice, practice. Yoga is a practice. How many of you do yoga? Yoga is a great practice, and it is a practice because I remember my first time in Bikram yoga, I, I could barely get into a pose. It was like took everything, everything in me to just stay in the room. But they told me, if you stay in the room, you've done good. <laughs> so I said, okay, and that was my practice. Pretty soon I was able to do the poses, and then I got really good. It's a practice, you know? And isn't it fun when you're practicing and then you reach the next level and the next level, and you become so confident and so clear in your conviction and ability to do the thing you came here to do, whether it's yoga or playing an instrument or writing or studying uh, being in ministerial school or studying to be a practitioner or whatever it is, you know? It's so amazing. Now, Living Everyday Wonder is our theme for 2022, and each month, uh, each month our seed of awakening will be about tuning into that particular seed for the month to expand our awareness of it. So we have action to take to practice in our lives. 
Now, it's a practice, and we can find daily opportunities to practice our practice, right? We have this book of the month called Ordinary Wonder, and there are so many great chapters. She's funny. This author is a funny gal. <laughs> and there's one chapter, uh, page 149, and the chapter is called Meet the Parsnips. <laughs> and I thought, Meet the Parsnips? That is so weird. And then I read it, and, and it's so profound. It is so profound. So uh, she is going to a dinner party, and her very best friend is, is hosting this dinner party, and she's so happy to be going. And, and she gets there, and it's great, and there's one thing that she doesn't really like, parsnips. <laughs> and so, of course, her best friend serves up this heaping thing of parsnips. <laughs> And she's like, what am I supposed to do, right? What am I supposed to do? And so she realizes that she's going to have to eat these parsnips <laughs> because this is her best friend. This is her best friend. She's not going to throw a tantrum and say, I don't eat parsnips, you know. <laughs> so, so she sits with the parsnips the parsnips are served, and she says sometimes it's just about being with those things in our lives that are difficult, those things that we don't want to face, like the parsnips. <laughs> and she says, by the way, parsnips are ugly from far away and from close up. <laughs> but she says sometimes you just have to be with the things that you don't like uh, or the things that are difficult for a while until you can actually face them. Wow, right? And so she says it's not about pretending or using false positive thinking. You dislike parsnips, and there's no way around that, right? You don't like them. You're not going to sit and affirm, I love parsnips. Parsnips are wonderful. I'm so happy to have these parsnips in my life. Look at the wonder of parsnips. I am so blessed by these parsnips. I will eat them all, yum, 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 and then you throw up. It's not what you're going to do. No. She says, look at the parsnips, right? You begin by looking at the parsnips. And then you be with the parsnips and feel what you feel in your body as you are being with these parsnips, right? Eventually, the eating comes a little easier. But she says sometimes you have to stay in this zone of being with the parsnips for a long time and see how you feel about it and feel how you feel about it. And then <laughs> you take it an eighth of an inch by an eighth of an inch at a time. You eat a little tiny bit. And then you go, well, I didn't die from that. Maybe I can do half an inch by half an inch. And then a little more, and then a little more. You don't have to like the parsnips, but sometimes you can eat them. Wow, right? How profound is that? So then she says, now we meet the parsnips everywhere we go. <laughs> everywhere we go, we are meeting these parsnips. And there is no answer except the one thing that we have to do. And to understand that is to understand practice. To understand that is to understand what practice is all about. We understand our own resistance to it, right? We understand a little bit of how to deal with that resistance that is within us. And to know that even if you handle the parsnips, there will be something else next. That's the nature of evolving. That's the nature of our world. And so uh, Science of Mind, page 423, Ernest Holmes said, I would rather see a student of this science prove its principle than to have him repeat all of the words of wisdom that have ever been uttered. And so, right? Huh. <laughs> I'm going to read that again. I would rather see a student of this science prove its principle than to have him repeat all the words of wisdom that have ever been uttered. 
So, right, yeah, thank you, Ernest Holmes, woo! Uh, so I, I do Facebook posts, and, and I post about things I've experienced, right? I don't just post about any random thing. It's actually something that I have experienced and something that I can speak from because it occurred to me that somebody may ask me a question about it and if I don't have a real experience of it, how can I truly answer it from my own experience and practice of this truth? Which means I'm walking my talk right? I'm walking my talk, which is so important. I would rather see a student of the science prove its principle than to have him repeat all the words of wisdom that have ever been uttered. How many of you know people that are so good at speaking uh, this and that and throwing out these beautiful words, but uh, then they're like burning bodies and, <laughs> and, you know, being angry and it's like, We've got to come to this place where we're able to be what we're speaking of. We're able to, um, able to practice it in our lives. It takes practice, in other words, right? We've got to practice these words and practice what, uh, what we believe in order to really be in integrity, ultimately. So... Uh, on page 51, 52, Ernest Holmes also writes, it's easy enough to rush about shouting that there are no sick people, but this will never heal those who appear to be sick. It is easy to proclaim that there are no needy. Anyone can say this, whether he be wise or unwise. But if we are to prove such statements to be facts in our experiences, we shall be compelled to do more than announce a principle, no matter how true it may be. No matter how true it may be. So we come here on Sundays, there's a message, and what do we do with that message? What do we do with that call to action? Are we taking that action into our lives? And, uh, and one of my teachers early on said, you know, if you're not experiencing results in your life as a result of this teaching, you might want to revisit what you're doing. <laughs> because what is it that you are seeking, you know? What is it? And so, uh, so we can use these principles in our lives. Now, one last quote from Ernest Holmes. Find me 1,000 people in the world who know what science of mind is, and use it and live it as it is, and I'll myself live to see a new world, a new heaven, and a new earth. Amen, right? And so as I prepare to close, I'm going to invite the musicians to come up and uh, prepare for the closing song. So 2022 is our year to live everyday wonder. <clears throat> And we live everyday wonder by taking action. And that action can be as simple as changing your mindset, right? And we practice that. We practice it. So next month, the seed of awakening is inner life. And the invitation for us as we leave here, if you haven't already considered it, is what is one area of my life that could benefit from a little bit more wonder. Is it relationships, finances, health, love, exercise, dance, prayer, meditation, freedom, forgiveness, parsnips? <laughs> what is one area of my life that could benefit from a greater experience of wonder? And then take that and engage in it. Engage in that process. And engage in that process of wonder. You know, set some time aside uh, weekly to fully engage in that practice, to research about it, to talk to people about it, to find out more about it. And allow yourself to grow and to learn and to be grown by the divine. We become what we practice. Now, last week, uh, I started this cool thing, which was Ask the Rev, and I have some questions here. 
somewhere. Here they are. <clears throat> so there were a lot of great questions, you guys, and I'm going to give, uh, actually hand these out again if somebody, or just take one and pass it down if you want to write a question. That would be awesome. Um, we got a couple of questions from the online folks. Thank you. Um, if you want to email your question, you can email it to revelizabeth at awakeningways.org. And so there are some deep questions that I received that I'm not going to answer here, but I am doing something new for the month of February, and it's called Chat with the Minister. And, <laughs> and that's going to be Wednesdays at 5 o'clock for this month. And so it's on Zoom, and it'll be an opportunity for you to come, and I will answer questions. And it'll be 30 minutes to an hour, however much time uh, we take. You know, we're not going to try to expand it. If we only need a half an hour, we'll just do a half an hour, right? But we'll have prayer, uh, Q&A, and, and then any discussion that wants to happen or it may uh, stir or evoke more questions, you know. But there are some deep questions, and I thought, wow, um, this has got to be recorded. So we'll probably also be doing it Facebook Live. And so I invite you to come to those. And there are also questions that I loved, which are questions about me. So I realized that I'm still new and we don't know each other that well. So one of the questions I got was, are you going to offer any classes or courses? Now, the answer to that is yes. As a matter of fact, I'm so glad you asked. We are going to start our first class here in March on Tuesday evenings at 6 p.m., and that is going to be a foundations class. And now I know that many of you have probably already taken foundations class. However, you haven't taken it with me. <laughs> and foundations is different for each teacher, right? And so you will have a totally different experience of it regardless of whether you took it six months ago or six years ago, right? And also, it's a beautiful opportunity for us to go deeper together. We get to explore things and ask questions. You know, you'll get to ask questions and connect with community, which I know we haven't done for a long time, right? And so um, more details about that class will be coming soon. And uh, just to get a gauge how many of you would plan to take that class. I've got a five or six over here. Okay, good. Yeah, we have a minimum of 10. So minimum requirement of 10, and I think we'll meet that. So it'll be a beautiful thing, you guys. And uh, again, please consider with your whole heart uh, taking this class with us and going deeper together. So that'll be the first class. And then I also have a workshop that is coming soon. That'll be like a two-evening a workshop related to the power of your word and about integrity and your access to the power of your word, which is something really fun. Uh, so be on the lookout for that too. That one will be Zoom. Next question. What town do you live in? <laughs> San Luis Obispo. I live in San Luis Obispo. That one was easy, right? <laughs> and then the next question. What is your day job? Another great question. So I am the IT service manager for a company called People Self-Help Housing. What is IT? Information technology. So, uh, so we have over 52 properties, and they are affordable housing properties. Some are senior living, some are uh, low-income housing, and, uh, and there's others and that my mind can't think of them right now, but uh, it's people self-help housing, and so we manage the IT uh, for them. So at the properties, there's a property manager's office, and in that property manager's office, there's a network set up, and they've got computers and printers and all of that, and so if they have a problem, they call the help desk, and I assign a ticket to one of my staff. <laughs> I also help out too. And then we also manage the IT. We're a managed service provider. Our t IT department is so off the hook that we actually manage the IT for Transitions Mental Health Association. And they have like 30 locations. And so they keep us busy, right? And, and so 
the whole uh, service level management falls under my responsibility and my accountability, which is, it's huge. And so uh, I work from home. We have a new building that, w that we had built over by the airport in San Luis Obispo. And so um, in October of this year, uh, we moved from our offices in uh, on Empleo and over by Trader Joe's in Slo. You know where that is, and uh, and so our department got to pack up all the computers and phones and monitors, and then the movers moved them, and then we went over to the new building on Kendall by the airport and unpacked them and set up all the desktops. It's been a busy, busy year, right? Last year was wild. <laughs> And so, uh, so we're now at the Kendall location, and I'm there once a week, maybe. The rest of the time, I work from home. So there you have it. And then I also am working at the Awakening Ways office. <laughs> and so uh, you received another one of these forms. If you picked one up, I encourage you to write down your question, you know, um, and, and we'll have some fun with this. And, uh, and the deeper questions we'll address on Wednesday nights in February. And I'm looking forward to being with you uh, at those, those Wednesdays. So, you know, um, I was telling Deb, grab your favorite drink, the beverage of your choice. You're not driving, it could be wine, it could be coffee, it could be whatever, <laughs> whatever you want, right? And show up and we'll have some good conversation. All right, so. My friends, thank you for tuning in to KGOD. All spirit, all the time, commercial free. Keep tuning in to KGOD and you will learn to accentuate the positive and let go of the negative, which leads to a successful, optimistic, happy, and fulfilled life. Today's broadcast was brought to you by the angels and the cosmic merry maids of the universe. We hope you enjoyed hearing your celestial song of love, peace, joy, harmony, abundance, wisdom, compassion, and bliss. <laughs> Let's take a deep breath together. <sighs> and another one. <sighs> and join me in turning our attention inward and returning to this beautiful, expansive space within, which is the space where I know and remember with every fiber of my being that spirit is all that there is. And I'm so grateful in this moment to be tuned into KGOD and to know that it's as simple as turning that dial a little bit to the left or to the right should I come into static through my day. And I'm so grateful that we each continue to explore wonder, wonder everywhere, and that we are each filled with the love of the divine and the strength of spirit as we individually meet the parsnips wherever we go. And we know that we have within us what is necessary. I'm so grateful for this presence of love and spirit in my life, for this presence of love in each one of our lives, in this community that is Awakening Ways. What a beautiful gift. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you for this and so much more. With great gratitude, I know that we are filled with love and our days are blessed beyond measure. I release this prayer knowing it is so, and so it is. <laughs> Yay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> The dark clouds roll away and the sun begins to shine I see my freedom across the way and it comes right in on time 
shines so bright, gives off all so much light. It comes from the sky above. Make me feel so free, yeah. Makes me feel like me. And it lights my life of love. Ushers, please come forward. It's now time for our conscious giving. And, uh, and if you are giving cash, we invite you to put your cash in one of these envelopes that is in, was in your order of service there. And you can put your name on the envelope, and then you'll receive a giving statement at the end of the year. <coughs> Excuse me. And we have an affirmation, and I invite you to please... Take your gift and place it over your heart and repeat after me. Divine love through me. Divine love through me. Blesses and multiplies all that I have. Blesses and multiplies all that I have. All that I give. All that I give. And all that I receive. And all that I receive. Joyously I give. Joyously I give. And joyfully I receive. Joyfully I receive. And, so and so it is. <laughs>
Take a big sigh and let it out, expressing our gratitude for such an amazing morning. So we give thanks for these blessings of abundance that have been shared from the heart that will bless not only awakening ways, but will bless the community as we share our bounty. So we remember this morning as we leave <coughs> that we take KGOD with us so that it will remind us everywhere we look to see the wonder of the universe. So we give thanks for this morning. We give thanks for the musicians. We give thanks for Reverend Elizabeth and her wonderful talk and for each and every one of us being here. We are a blessing to each other and to this community. Releasing these words unto the law, together we say, and so it is. Yes, all right. Uh, we don't have children today, so Susan's up. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Today, I am your announcements angel. <laughs> so, next Sunday in the afternoon at 2.30, um, Patricia Alexander will be having the Healthy Body Connecting Circle. And that will be um, taking place on Zoom. The theme is the power of the mind-body connection. So you'll be receiving an email during the week to with the Zoom link on it. So that'll be at 2.30 next Sunday, which is the 6th of February. Um, as our Reverend Elizabeth let us all know, there will be a midweek um, chat with the minister this week at 5 p.m. on Zoom. So that link will be coming out on Tuesday. Now this is instead of the, the midweek connecting circle. So if you're used to connecting at 1 o'clock, just enjoy your day and tune in with your favorite beverage at 5 p.m. Those are wonderful experiences, by the way. Um, the other thing is and we say this every week, but it's really, really important. We really, really encourage everyone to think about ways that they might be able to serve this community in some way, form, or another. We have positions for setting up during uh, at the beginning of the service, which is now really streamlined and easy. If we got enough people to do these things, you'd only have to do it maybe once a month. Um, setting up, taking down, very easy. We always need volunteers to work with our beautiful, beloved sound crew back there. And um, we also actually need a volunteer on Zoom to be our Zoom host. So if you're Zooming and you would like to learn how to do that, what you want to do is see Travis or you want to see Reverend Elizabeth and Either one of them can help guide you on to how you might find a way to serve this community. We appreciate every bit of it. And that, beloveds, are the announcements. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. And if you have uh, filled out your question, you can either bring it up here and leave it in this chair <laughs> if you didn't put it in the offering basket. So let's stand and... We'll do our benediction and call and response. So friends, won't you know with me that you are never alone, that God is where you are right now and always, and all that you ever need do is turn within, and it is here you will find you are guided, sustained, directed, and inspired by a source that knows only good. Joyously let us make use of these gifts in all that we think, in all that we say, and in all that we do. Please repeat after me, something wonderful is happening as me right now. Something wonderful is happening as me right now. It is this thing called life. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in my body. Life is in my pocketbook. Life is in my pocketbook. Life is in my relationships. Life is in my relationships. Life is everywhere. Life is everywhere. I think it. I think it. I feel it. I 
I believe it. I express it. I express it. I accept it. I accept it. Just the way that it is. Just the way that it is. And just the way that it is not. Just the way that it is not. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. Woo! May I be filled with love and kindness. 